Good day, boxing fans. Welcome to Drugs Milan Unboxing. I'm sitting here in the lobby at Emperor's Palace, close to where the weigh-in was, and we're all waiting for Saturday night when Kevin Lorena takes on Riyad Meri from Belgium in a WBC Bridgerweight Eliminator over 12 rounds, also on the cards. The South African heavyweight title fight between the champion Keaton Gomes and the challenger Joshua Pretorius. If that interests you, stick around for the breakdown. Okay, so Bridger weight is a weight division at 224 pounds. That's 101.6 kilos if you're in the metric system like us. And it's a weight division at the moment still only recognized by the WBC. And it's a division that's bridging the gap, pardon the tip of pun, between the cruiserweights and the heavyweights that are growing bigger and bigger. Now, whether there's a need for the weight division and whether it will take off in a big way is a debate for a different time. But we have a very good fight on our hands because we've got Kevin Lorena, who's back from his journey in the heavyweight division in his last fight. He knocked Daniel Dubois down three times and then got brutally stopped himself in the third round. Now he's back in a lower weight division. I think it's a weight that suits him very well. He was killing himself to make cruiserweight. He's too big for the heavyweights. So that's where he will be fighting. So no problems making the weight. And I think Miri looks a little bit bigger than Lorena, but not a huge size difference that, than like what we, that there was in the Dubois fight. Now, Riyad Miri, for his part, is a formidable opponent, especially if we think that Kevin is coming off his only stoppage loss in his last fight. And usually when a fighter does that, you bring them back slowly against a lower level opponent or somebody that is not a big puncher. But Lorena, he says he knows where his mind's at. He is, isn't worried, he's in the right uh, mental space and he's jumping straight out of a frying pan back into the fire. Now Riyad Meri, who is he? He's got a very impressive uh, record, 31 wins against one loss and there is a very impressive 26 knockouts in those 31 min wins. Now Kevin Lorena, we know he's a southpaw, he's sort of a, a boxer and mover, he's explosive, he fights in spots and he box in spots and Mary, on the other hand, is an orthodox fighter. He's got all those knockout wins. His only loss was to current WBA World Cruiserweight Champion Arsen Gulamirian. Now, Arsen Gulamirian is one of those really, really good fighters that nobody outside of Europe knows about. If you've never seen him, go and check him out. He's like a super-sized Gennady Golovkin. Not quite though, that many skills, but, but those heavy hands. But he carries hammers in his fists and he breaks you down with those heavy hands. And in that fight, Mary was very competitive, but eventually he succumbed in the 11th round and got stopped against Gulam Mirian. That was way back in 2018. He's only had wins since. And uh, he picked up a WBA interim title when he knocked out unbeaten Imre Zalo of Poland. Now, Mary is more of an orthodox fighter than Kevin Lorena is in the sense he has a good jab, he boxes behind that jab, and he slowly sets traps for his opponent. Uh, his, his best punch is probably the straight right. He likes to sort of throw it over the, the, the lead of his opponent. And then he's also got a decent left hook. That he, that's not a, that's not, he usually doesn't throw it short. It's sort of a sweeping left hook that drives his opponent towards the right hand. And he, his jab, as I've said, is decent, but he doesn't use it often enough. Now, uh, what are the weaknesses of Riyad Mary? I would say that he's got a suspect chin. I think his chin is pretty solid. Uh, Gulam Mirian didn't get him out of it in a couple of rounds. He had to grind him down over 11 rounds. So if you're chinny, you're not going to go that long against Gulam Mirian. So I think his chin is maybe not the best in boxing. It's not the greatest chin, but it's a solid chin. So I can't see Kevin Lorena blasting out Riyad Mary. I, I, I think Mary will stand up to the power of Kevin Lorena. Mary, on the other hand, he's flat on his feet. He does get hit around the guard. His defense is, is, is quite basic. He blocks and parries with his gloves. And uh, he's got some movement and he ducks, but he, he hasn't got a very slick upper body movement or, or something like that. He does take punches on his way to scoring that knockout win. And I think Kevin Lorena, for his part, 
he's, he's a better pure athlete of the two, but we know this is boxing, uh, as Bernard Hopkins uh, uh, showed us time and time again, and many other fighters like James Tony, the best athlete is not always the guy that wins. But I do think, having said that, that Kevin Lorena has got the quicker hands, he's got the faster feet. I give an edge and power to Riyad Meri. Now, those 26 knockouts and 31 wins, it's a very impressive knockout ratio. I think it flatters him a little bit because many of those knockouts came against lower grade fighters, but then Imre Zalo was decent and he knocked him out. So I think Riyad Mary definitely can punch. He is a dangerous puncher and Kevin's going to have to look out for that classic reply to the south for the right hand. So he definitely can, uh, can hit, but I don't think he's quite as brutal a puncher as his record suggests, but we'll find out on the night. So who is going to win? Now, I can see many, many things happening here. It's a fight where I'm not at all too sure. It is in Kevin Lorena's backyard. I know for a fact that Riyad Mary in his camp are very, very confident. I spoke to his promoter, Alain Van Akir, and they're very confident of a win. You don't come to a foreign country in such an important fight and hoping that you're going to win it, a close fight on points. They are, uh, their mindset seems to be that they're going to knock out Lorena. Now, is that going to happen? It could happen if there's ghosts of the war in Lorena's head. But he seems like the kind of guy that, uh, if that was the case, he wouldn't take this fight. But he's, he's, for his part, also very confident. It's for the WBC eliminator for the Bridgeway title. The champion is Lukasz Rozanski, a Polish fighter. And I think, actually, Riyad Mary is a tougher fight for Kevin. And Rozanski is going to be assuming that Kevin will uh, uh, win this fight. And what is going to happen? You know, I can see Mary catching Kevin and maybe even stopping him if, if Kevin is not on his P's and Q's. Knowing Kevin, he will be, but I think this is a very difficult fight for Kevin Lorena and for Riyad Mary. Kevin Lorena is a southpaw, remember, Mary hasn't got much experience of southpaws. There will be some awkward stylistic things for Mary to figure out, I think. But I think Kevin has got the quicker hands, he's a bit more explosive, and as long as he's not too careful or too energetic and just go for, for Mary, and run into something, I think it's a fight that he can win. I expect Mary to have his moments and I expect Kevin to have his moments. But in the end, I think Kevin is going to be the slightly better ring general. He's going to move when he has to and he's going to pot shot his shots when he has to. And I think it's going to be a close fight. It's going to be uh, two points in it. It's going to be one of those kind of fights. And I think Kevin Lorena, his feet and, he, and his hand speed will allow him to win a very hard fought close decision. So I'm going with Kevin Lorena on points in the main event on Saturday night. And then underneath it, the main supporting bout, we have a very slippery, ever-evolving South African heavyweight title. Nobody seems to be able to defend that belt successfully. They all lost it in their, in their, in their first title defense. We had Tian Fuck who lost it to Jean Roux. That was the last time that I got a prediction right involving the South African heavyweight title. So whatever I'm going to say, you probably best advised to bet the opposite way. Well, Jean Roux took it from Tian Fuck, then Josh Pretorius, who is a challenger tomorrow, outboxed Jean Roux. And then Josh lost it in his first defense in turn to Chris Thompson. And Chris Thompson lost it to the champion that's defending tomorrow, Keaton Gomes, in a really wild affair. I was uh, lucky enough to be on the ring apron right there in the action for that bout. And uh, it was a slam bang affair and Keaton Gomes won by six round stoppage. Now, what is going to happen? It's also one of those pick and fights because Josh Pretorius, he's, he's been around for a while. I've been at many of his fights. I've been at many of Keaton's fights. And uh, Josh at this stage, he's, he's quite a ring savvy, almost a veteran. He's got a very good chin, and by now we know what Josh is good at and what he's not good at. Josh Pretoria struggles when he's got tall, rangy fighters with a good jab in front of him. He, he, he battles to get over the hill and loses to guys like Tian Fuck, uh, Chris Thompson, those kind of guys. Uh, Justice Siliga way back then, but that was a, a more raw Josh. He struggles against those kind of guys. But when he has a fighter that comes forward, comes towards him, like for Alam Nieber, like Jean Roux, then Josh the boxes very well because he's got a good jab. And against that sort of fighter, if he doesn't have to slip and duck and dive and the guy comes at him, his jab is quite effective and he counters well. So that is the thing about Josh Pretorius. I think 
Keith and Gomes' style, stylistically at least, he's not going to have a nightmare that he had against a southpaw like Chris Thompson or uh, a very tall Tian Thuk. So I think Keith and Gomes' aggressive come forward, explosive style will suit Josh. But Keaton is as strong as an ox. He can punch. So there's a the danger spot there for the first four rounds, maybe five rounds or so. Because Keaton Gomes can be outboxed, like we saw in his two losses against Level Machitoa. Uh, but Keaton, uh, Keaton, you know, after a few rounds, he starts gassing. And we saw that even in the Thompson fight. It looked to me like Thompson was clawing his way back into the fight. And uh, Keaton was sort of breathing hard. And then he just cranked off a big punch and he turned it around and he stopped uh, Thompson before Thompson could completely turn the fight in his favor. So that is a danger with Keaton Gomes. Josh has got to get through the first four rounds. And if Keaton doesn't take Josh out by the first half of the fight, I, I think Keaton, unless he suddenly found stamina, is going to be in trouble. And I think Josh might well just start picking him apart and outboxing him. So what do I think is going to happen there? I think Josh is going to weather some very rocky moments early. He's going to get through it. And then I think Keaton is going to get tired and Josh is going to take over. Will Josh be able to stop a, a, a tiring Keaton Gomes late? I sort of wonder because Josh Pretorius, his mentality is more a boxer. He doesn't really go after guys to knock them out. Not from his fights that I've seen. So I'm thinking that Keaton will pull ahead. It'll be a torrid first four rounds for Joshua Pretorius. And then Keaton is going to get tired and Josh Pretorius is just going to start outboxing him as the rounds go by and regain the South African heavyweight title and leave it still without a first title defense. So I'm going for Josh Pretorius there to eke out a points win over Keaton Gomes by coming on later in the fight. That's what I think. Guys, in the comment sections, please tell me what do you think? Who do you think uh, wins between Lorena and Mary? How do you think Keaton Gomes and Josh Pretorius is going to go? And there's also some good prospects on the undercard. We've got Keanu Koopman, we've got Bevan Sabanda. So tune in, I think, Saturday night on, I think it's channel number 208, but go check your guide on your remote from 7 o'clock. I think it's going to be a good few fights that boxing fans can enjoy. Until I see you guys again, remember to hit that thumbs up button, hit the like, and please smash the subscribe. And until I see you again, as always, remember to keep those hands up.